Commander Simon O'Brien of the Metropolitan Police says they're aiming to ensure that there's no trouble. What we are looking for is those people to come out and exercise their free democratic right. What we don't want to see is people that want to hijack any of those sort of demonstrations. We're picking up things, as many other people are on the internet, where some people are talking about actually coming to London to commit uh, acts of crime and disorder. Uh, they will be dealt with in a totally different way by the Metropolitan Police Service over the next couple of days. The next two days will be hectic for the Prime Minister and the US President. This summit is a big deal for Gordon Brown. It's the biggest event he's hosted since the start of his premiership. He'll be hoping that everything goes smoothly and that there's enough consensus to make this super summit a successful one. Ruth MacDonald reporting. So activists and protesters are already gathering in London ahead of the G20 summit. The Green Party is hoping it'll get the chance to press for more action on the environment around the world. Rupert Reid is here in the studio with me now this morning. Rupert is a Green councillor in Norwich. He's also hoping to become a Euro MP. And uh, you're off down to London later this morning. Um, what do you hope to be do doing in London during the summit? Well, primarily what I'm going to be focusing on, Stephen, is uh, action on the economy, actually. Um, what we need to be doing is uh, having a what they call a fiscal stimulus, but it, it needs to be a green a fiscal stimulus. We need to be having a big investment, for example, in renewable energy, in energy efficiency, in sustainable agriculture, um, and thereby produce um, an, an economic stabilisation package um, which will also generate us long-term savings. That's the beautiful thing about, a, about green investments, that you get your money back over time because you've been investing in things which yield free energy for you in the future. Now, when you, when you get all these, these countries together uh, uh, dis discussing the future of uh, the world's economy and environment, we, we would uh, like to think, uh, does from each country, do, do all main political parties, all parties get involved with, with that country's message? Do you feel like you've been involved with uh, what Gordon Brown will be saying? Not really, no. Unfortunately, it's primarily the governments which uh, decide what's, uh, what's to be done on these fronts. And, of course, one of our main messages, therefore, is that it's these very governments, these very G20 governments, which have got us into this terrible mess in the first place. So, um, unfortunately, they're not really the best place people to get us out of it. The one exception, of course, the, the new kid on the block is Obama. And I think, therefore, there is quite a lot of hope that Obama will lead the way towards the kind of Green New Deal that we're talking about and also towards the kind of financial re-regulation that we absolutely need. We've got to do things like st clamp down on tax havens and on bankers' bonuses if there's going to be any chance of a more sustainable financial system coming out of this. Uh, can you stay with us? And we'll chat more uh, in a couple of minutes' time. We'll have news headlines and a look at travel, and then we'll chat some more. Thank you. If you're just switching on, good morning. I was uh, just saying that activists and protesters are already gathering in London uh, just ahead of the uh, G20 summit there. The Green Party is hoping it'll get the chance to press for more action on the environment around the world. R Rupert Reid is here in the studio, a Green councillor in Norwich, also hoping to become a, a Euro MP. So, I, I mean, d just how uh, at the front of all this are you going to be in London and, and how difficult or easy is it to get, get your point across? Well, it's going to be interesting to see how it works out. I very much hope the police aren't going to be too heavy-handed in the way that they police the protests. Um, the main thing I'm going to be trying to do is tomorrow, when on the actual day of the summit, to get as close as I can to the Excel Centre. Um, I've got a, a rather charming uh, placard calling for a, a Green New Deal, um, which is our main policy platform in terms of how to stabilise the economy and um, end the credit crunch. Um, and I'm going to be hoping to get that um, in front of the world's leaders via the media, of course. This is the, this is the reason why it, it's very worth attending these kinds of summits, even as someone who isn't invited, um, is because it's a huge chance to get your message um, onto the TV, onto the broadcast media, into the newspapers. Do you really think that's the best way? Because when when, when we see news coverage of of uh, people, sometimes I mean, hordes of people with with various placards, it always seems quite unruly. And do, do you worry that your message is is going to get lost with with any uh, protests uh, that may be getting out of hand? Maybe nothing to do with the Green Party, but people just think protesters. Of course, that's uh, that's a concern, Stephen. But the main thing is that I'm not really going down there so much to protest as to argue for a positive alternative. Um, we think what's happened in the past couple of years has been a completely predictable disaster, um, and we think that we've got the alternative policies that would uh, solve the problem. Uh, and it's going to be going down to advocate those policies of a Green New Deal, of green jobs, um, of um, creating a new, more sustainable financial system, which isn't going to get us into the kind of financial disaster 
disaster once again that we have got ourselves into recently. We're going to be calling for all the rascals who've got us into this to be thrown out. Uh, and we in the Green Party, we've got a clean record on this. We're going to be hoping to be making our, our case to be their replacements. Uh, why, why do you think then that the Green options or your, your plans or uh, anything similar to them haven't been taken on board already? Well, that's a very good question. Um, of course, they have been taken on board in some parts of the world. Um, so, for example, uh, Barack Obama has put in place some elements of our Green New Deal proposals. He's actually read the Green New Deal report that was authored by our leader, Caroline Lucas, MEP. Um, and some of what he's doing, a big, big investment in renewable energy, for example, is the kind of thing we need to be doing. We think it's a great shame that Gordon Brown hasn't taken more of an um, example from his lead. And we're going to be pressing, among other things, Gordon Brown to, uh, to adopt a Green New Deal. And if, as we suspect, unfortunately he won't, then we're going to be making uh, loud and clear our case to the people through the media that it really is time for the Greens to be put at the helm rather than the Browns. Now, when you look at these uh, summits, like the G20 summit uh, and the big issues, uh, the two big ones, environment, of course, and uh, then the uh, economic uh, recession at the moment, do you think the way they conduct these meetings, do you, do you think it sort of uh, mirrors the feeling of the people going along to them and the rest of the world watching? Well, I think that's a very interesting question. Um, I, I'm interested to see how they're going to handle this summit. As I say, I really hope that the police aren't going to spoil the party and that uh, no violent protesters are going to spoil the party um, either. But I, what I do think is that in the longer term, we need to be thinking about whether there's a more sustainable model for these kinds of summits. So does everyone actually need to go there? Or could you do some of it by video conference? That's what I had in mind. See, mm. that was what I was thinking of. Uh, Rupert Reid, thank you so much for coming to see us. Rupert Reid is a Green councillor in Norwich, also hoping to become a Euro MP. It's Breakfast with Stephen Bumfrey, 21 minutes past seven, very nearly.